Last time we left off here where we are adding our buttons in our list and changing their images. Now we need to add a function to our button that's going to be executed when we touch our button. And I'm going to name that function, function public void pick a puzzle. And the function needs to be public void in order for this to work. Now, if you watched my guess the game number and I encourage you to go and watch it, you know that in order to add a functionality to a button, so for example, if I have a button here, I need to go here and click on this plus sign, attach a game object, and then choose a script in our case, game controller, and then click on this pick a puzzle. And here I'm simply going to say debug.log, and here I'm going to write, you are clicking a button. So a button like this. And if I go back now and run the game, if I click the button, so we see that we have this button here, we see that you are clicking a button is being printed out in the console. But how are we going to add our functionality to our buttons if we don't have them in our scene? Here we have our buttons, which is, or excuse me, this button, and now I can click on the plus sign and add that script to it, so on and so forth. But our buttons are being created when we press play and after that we have these buttons here in our well game well in order to do that we need to write it through our code so here i'm going to create add listeners function and this is named a listener so when we add a function to a button that's named a listener so how can we add a listener well we well excuse me we need to use our buttons list for that we need to say for int i is equal to zero, as long as i is less than buttons that count i plus plus. So we can process our list the same way as we are processing our arrays, which I well told you. So here we have our buttons that count, which is going to return how many buttons we have. What we can also do instead of this, we can write a for each loop, and here we can say for each button btn in our btns. So this is practically the same thing, and this is a better way to process lists instead of using, well, this for loop. So here we can type for each button that's in our buttons, and this is what this code here practically means. So for each button in our buttons, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say button.onclick.addListener. And this is how I add a listener or a function to a button. And the syntax is like this. So here in these parentheses, again, we need to write parentheses and then equals and greater than sign. And then we need to pass a function, which is a pick a puzzle. So this function right here. And here we are adding our listener to our buttons. And we need to call this here in our start function below our get buttons because we cannot call it above because in order to add our listeners to our buttons, we need to get them, which we are doing inside of this function right here. And if I go back now and run the game, each button that we touch, we are going to see you are clicking a button. So each button that we are touching, we see you are clicking a button. And that means that we are actually, excuse me, adding that, well, listener to our button. Now, how can we determine which button we are clicking? For that, I'm going to return for this right here or to this right here, which I mentioned that we need to name our buttons using, well, our, well, index right here. What this is going to do, and if I go back here, we see that we have named our buttons 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth. And now what I can do, and here I can type, you are clicking a button, and I'm going to say named, so button named, and here I'm going to create a string and I'm going to name it name, which is equal to, in order to get the name of our button, what I can do is I can type here unity engine dot event systems dot event system dot current dot current select game object dot name. And this is going to return the name of the current selected game object. So if I go back in unity and run the game, this is going to return the name of our game object, which in our case is 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth. So now if I go back here, I'm simply going to append our name. So I'm going to say plus name. And now if I run the game again, 
when I touch a button, so here we are saying you're clicking a button named zero, which is this one right here. If we click this one, you are clicking a button named seven, a button named five, so on and so forth. So this is how are we going to determine which button we are clicking and for what we are going to use this also is we are going to have an array of our sprite images and we are going to use these the names of our buttons as indexes in order to access those arrays. So let us take a look at how can we do next. So again, here we are simply using this Unity Engine or Unity Engine.Event Systems, Event System Current, Current Selected Game Object and Name to get the name of the selected game object. So we are simply adding our listeners here and executing those listeners. Again, this is a syntax for adding a listener to our button. And again, in the next video, we are going to see how are we going to get our resources, which are our puzzles, and how are we going to interact with them and how we are going to use the names of our buttons in order to, or as indexes, to access our sprites. So if you like my tutorials, if you like what you see, subscribe, comment, share, and I will see you in the next video.